Sclerotinia white mold is one of the worst diseases you can get. It affects soybeans and a number of other crops. We're gonna to talk today about how to solve this problem, but let me start by saying this. We had the worst white mold issue that I've ever seen in my entire life, and I wanna explain one of the reasons I believe it was so bad this particular year. The humidity in my state, in my area, and this is South Dakota, where you usually think about this as being very dry. Well, the humidity in July was 80 plus percent. Guess what it was in August? It was 80% or more, again, on average. So you start thinking about two straight months where you've got an average humidity of 80% or more. That's a lot. It's no wonder we had a disaster this year. Well, with any disease, you have to look at the disease triangle. You have to have the right environmental conditions, you have to have the pathogen present, and you have to have a susceptible host. Where many farmers get caught up is being concerned about the susceptible host and thinking, well, I need to change which variety I plant. Whether it's sunflowers or soybeans or edible beans, there are always varieties that are a little more tolerant to diseases like white mold than others. And again, this was the case in 2019. There are some that were more tolerant, but I didn't find a single variety in any of the soybeans I looked at from group double zeros at the Canadian border to group fives down in the deep south that were resistant. Now, granted, we don't get much white mold once we get past about a group three because those beans are raised too far south, there's too much heat for the white mold to really be a problem. But when we look at the earlier maturing beans, yes, there's some that fought the white mold off a little better than others, but there certainly weren't any totally resistant. White mold starts as mushrooms. So if you think about this just logically, when do you have the best conditions for mushrooms? It's when there's a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity, and also some shade. So what'll happen is these mushrooms will get started, they will shoot spores out, and where they infect the soybean plant is where soybean flowers have dried up. See, so you're not gonna find white mold early in the season, but once the plant starts flowering, now when any of those flowers disappear, that usually is the best infection point for this sclerotinia white mold. And there's really part of the big problem with white mold, Brian, is it can pop up for multiple weeks through the season. In fact, multiple months through the season. Once that soybean has reached the reproductive stages, really from then until senescence, you could have more white mold infecting that plant. Oftentimes we see farmers turning to one or two applications of foliar fungicides, which can certainly help and be a part of the solution, but they can't be expected to protect that plant for a two month time period or maybe more. All right, so let's talk about the best control strategies. Number one is stay away from soybeans or any host crop to white mold for two or three years. We've seen this a lot on our farm where we have more corn history in the background on certain fields, we have a lot less white mold. Next thing is take a look at your soil pH and overall manganese availability. Manganese is a big key in terms of white mold tolerance for any plant, any crop. Manganese is more available when the pH is lower. So you wanna get your pH down into the sixes. And then the next thing is just have a lot of manganese out there. Soil test your manganese levels. And if your manganese levels aren't high, get them to high and you usually find things work better. I would also say drain tile is a big key here because if your soil is sitting overly saturated for very long, well, obviously those are good conditions for mushroom growth. What we want is for our soil to be healthy. We want our plants to be healthy and good drainage is absolutely a key. So those are some of the things you can do before the start of the season. Then we start looking at some other solutions. Uh, one that really doesn't cost much is heads up seed treatment. That's been one that's really helped us on our farm. We've seen other farmers as well saying, you know what, it didn't totally wipe out the white mold, but it definitely reduced the pressure when we put the heads up on. That's something I would recommend. Another thing would be taking a look at contents. That's a soil applied product that's a biological that eats the sclerotia. Now, the more time you'd have the contents out there, the better. So ideally, you'd put that out in the fall after soybean harvest and give the product more time to get working. But if you haven't done it yet, you could still do it before planting this year. Get it out soil applied. It doesn't hurt your seed at all, but it will start impacting that sclerotia in the field. Darren mentioned fungicides earlier and we'll talk more about that, but before you ever spray a fungicide, our suggestion is go out there with about six ounces of Cobra or the generic version of that. It only costs around five bucks. Do that in the middle of June, right before flowering. Cobra has been shown to be just as good or almost as good as the very best fungicides on white mold. So start with Cobra in soybeans right before flowering. 
When it comes to fungicides, Endura has been the best product. There are some newer ones that are making some claims, like Approach and Miravis Neo, and you know we've seen some mixed results there. I guess we'll continue to do more testing. What we've found is you can go a little bit cheaper and start using combinations of Topsin and Domark, get multiple modes of action for less money. All right, I'm gonna simplify it even more than that. Endura is absolutely the best. Then you got Proline. Then you've got a combination of Domark and Topsin. If you want something else, Approach and Miravis Neo, I don't think are even as good as the combination of Domark and Topsin, but you can try that on your farm. In terms of timing, that's the big key here. You have to start early. Starting earlier usually means better control, even with an inferior product. So start right at R1 at first flower, and then you wanna follow up about every two to three weeks after that. And of course, get great coverage, like with the Hypro 3D nozzles. You've got to coat everything if you want to protect it. Well, protecting your yields doesn't just mean having great fungicide activity. It also means having great weed control. We'll talk about our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.